Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> so today, inshallah, we are going to start the chapter Refraction of Light. Already you have a little bit of idea about the topic as the earlier chapter was also related to, uh, related to light, right? That was reflection of light. So whenever the light ray, you know, is traveling from one transparent medium to another, what happens? A certain portion of the light comes back to the previous medium. Okay, let us say this is the first medium, this is the second medium, okay? This is the first medium and this is the incident ray and this is the second medium. So from the surface, some of the light will be reflected back to the first medium itself that will not go to the second medium. So that phenomenon or that phenomenon is known as reflection of light. Okay. And that happens usually in case of mirror and some other glasses also. But uh, certain portion of it is reflected and certain portion goes through the second medium that enters into the second medium. Now we know that light ray generally goes in a straight path, travels in a straight line. But whenever it is changing the medium, we can see that it is changing its direction. Some practical example of it, whenever uh, you, know, you have a pencil, I know uh, most of us have done this in our life, okay, sometime. We have a glass of water and we put a pen or a pencil in it you will feel like the, it will appear that the pencil has been broken at the point of, or, you know, at the surface of separation, okay? At the surface above which there is air and below there is water. At that surface, you will feel like the pen has, you know, cracked, broken. Now, why this happens? Due to the reflection of, uh, refraction of light, okay? So, so this will be the refracted ray. This is the incident ray and this is the refracted ray. This is medium one, this is medium two. Always we will consider the light ray from which it is, the, from which the light ray is coming, that is medium one, and the other one in which the light ray will enter will be defined as medium two, okay? Now let us go through the definition, okay? Definition is very important and I will tell you a couple of points which you must mention in the definition. If those points are not present in your definition, when you write it in the exam, the teacher has the liberty to deduct your mark for that. Okay, you cannot challenge. Okay, so I will tell you and please take care, uh, be careful that you mention these points, okay, at least in your definition. So when light ray travels obliquely, now what do we mean by obliquely? Anybody has any idea what does this obliquely word mean? No, sir. I okay. don't Light ray may pass from one medium to another medium like this, you know, straight. In such case, there will not be any refraction. You repeat the same experiment, okay, of the glass and the pencil. You take a glass of water, you take a pencil and dip it straight. You will see that it is straight. You will, you, now you will not feel like it has been broken at the, at the surface of separation, right? So, when light ray is entering from one medium to another medium in the straight line, okay, the phenomenon of refraction of light, this one actually does not occur. What is refraction? The change of direction, okay? But here, you will see that the light ray is not changing its direction. It will go along the same path. So, that means if light ray comes, you know, perpendicular to the surface of separation, see, it has to be perpendicular to the surface of separation, then you will see refraction is not occurring. So refraction will occur only when the light ray enters obliquely. Baka bhave, not soja. Baka jodi boli soja bhave na, baka bhave. Obliquely mane pangla jodi jodi boli, baka bhave. Baka bhave, okay? So baka bhave jodi incident kore, tokhani shudhu matra ki bhave. Light ray direction je change hoche, sheta clearly buja jave, okay? So, it is so that our focus is looking camera like this. See, it like a direction ticket it to make it again. So, this phenomenon is known as refraction of light. So, this word I have boxed it because this is very important to mention. If you do not mention it, you don't deserve any mark in this definition. Okay. So, when light ray travels obliquely from one transparent medium, this is another important point transparent. The medium has to be transparent from which the light ray is coming and the second medium in which the light ray is entering, that medium has to be transparent too. Now, you have wood, right? Uh, wooden table or something. 
So can you see the light ray that is entering into the wood? No, right? Because it is not a transparent medium. But if you have a piece of glass, you can see that the light ray is passing through it, right? So glass is a transparent medium. Water, this is a transparent medium. And what is the proof that water is a transparent medium? Whenever you go to uh, on the bank of some river, you can see the fish, right? The water is so clear. Or you, you may go to the beach and uh, you can see that the stones, the pebbles <coughs> that are at the bottom of the uh, beach, you can see it, right? Because the water is very clear. So water is a transparent medium. So if the mediums are not transparent, light cannot travel through them. So it is also another important point to mention that the both medium has to has to be transparent. See, from one transparent medium to another transparent medium. Very important to mention. The light ray changes its direction. Okay, while traveling, it changes its di direction. Okay, this phenomenon is called refraction of light. Is there any confusion in the definition? No, no, no sir. Okay. So this is what refraction of light is. And now we will go through two laws of refraction, okay? If you remember in the chapter of reflection of light, we went through two uh, laws, right? Similarly, here also we have two laws. Inshallah, I will explain it after I write it on the board, okay? Okay, before we take a look at the laws, uh, let us introduce you to the terminologies that we are going to use in case of refraction of light. So here you can see that there will be one incident ray, okay, the light ray that is coming from the first medium, okay, and falling or incidenting on the surface of separation, okay, this is the surface of separation, you can see the line, this is the surface of separation, why, because above this there is one medium and below this there is another medium, so this is the surface of separation, so <clears throat> O is the point of incident, okay, O is the point of incidence, okay, AO is the incident ray. And you know that when uh, in reflection of light also we uh, did the same, we drew a normal if you remember, okay. If I draw a perpendicular on the surface of separation at the point of incidence, see what I said, I drew a perpendicular on the surface of separation at the point of incidence, okay. So that will be known as a <coughs> normal. So N, O, N prime, we have extended it up to N prime. So this is normal, okay? Now, the light ray was supposed to go along this way. Let us say this is, you know, M. It was supposed to go along OM way if it is traveling in a straight line, but we know that due to refraction of light it will change its direction and rather it will travel along OA prime, okay? So OA prime, this becomes our refracted ray, OA prime, okay? Now, the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called angle of incidence, okay? A O N, A O N. This angle in between, this is also represented by I, angle of incidence. And the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, okay, is known as angle of refraction, which is denoted by R also, okay? So in this figure, do you have any confusion? No, mashallah. Okay, so now we will take a look at the laws of refraction. Okay, so these are the two laws of reflection. Refraction, sorry. So the first law is same as the reflection of light, okay? There, it was the reflected law. The reflected ray lies in the same plane as uh, incident ray and the normal. Here, only the reflected will become refracted, okay? So that, that will be the only change. The second law is also known as Snell's law. This is very important to know. Why? Because in the question, you are never asked. Almost 90% of the time I have seen that they don't tell you write the second law of reflection. Rather, they will tell you state the Snell's law. Now, students actually know this law, but some of the students are there who doesn't actually know or remember that Snell's law is the second law of refraction. So as a result, what happens? They know the law, but they still cannot write it because they don't know that the second law of refraction is actually called the Snell's law. So sometimes I get this question after the exam, sir, what is the Snell's law? You didn't teach us that. Then I say, this is the one. 
and already I mentioned it in the class, but it's still, I don't know, somehow they managed to forget. Okay. No problem, I hope you won't forget, inshallah. So, the second law, I will be giving you two statements. Okay, first statement we will study today, and if the time permits, then we will take a look at the second statement also. But mostly, I'm willing to uh, start with the second statement in the next class, and mostly we will use the second statement. You will see later. Okay, inshallah. So, the statement one is very easy actually. If the refractive index of the first medium is N1, the refractive index of the second medium is n2 then the angle of incidence is theta 1 and the angle of uh, refraction is theta 2 then the relationship between them is uh, you know displayed by this equation this is actually the second law of refraction n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 okay so basically you have to focus on writing this equation correctly and then above that, you have to just introduce that, uh, the letters that you have written, what they actually represent, like N1, what N1 represents, the refractive index for the first medium. Now the question might come, what is the refractive index? Inshallah, that will be clarified after I go through the, or I take you through the second statement of this Snell's law, okay? That one actually clearly states what is the refractive index. Inshallah, we will take a look at that. And if not, we can do this class in the next class, Inshallah. Sir, okay. Ah, hold on. Sir, from where this time came? Huh? Time? This time. Time, yes. Where is time? No, sign, sign. Sign theta. Sin theta, theta two. Oh, sign theta. theta. You are already familiar with sign theta, cos theta, and theta, right? Yes, yes but uh, here yes. from where this sign I'm asking that. Oh, yeah, that is the formula. Oh, yeah. That if N1 is the refractive index of the first medium, theta 1 is the angle of incidence. In N2, this is the refractive index of the second medium, and theta 2 is the angle of refraction. Then what is the relationship between them? This is the relationship between them, okay? N1 sin theta 1 will be equal to N2 sin theta 2. That is the law. Snell's uh, Snell is actually the name of a scientist, okay? He actually found uh, this uh, uh, law. That is why it has been named after him, okay? So he found that always in the refraction of light, this is maintained, okay? So this is the second law of refraction. So I don't think if I start today the second statement, I will be able to finish it. So rather I, I will start this topic in the next class, inshallah. Whatever we discussed today on this, do you have any question? Nah, sir, oh, no, sir. Okay, so see you in the next class, inshallah, and I will be giving you notes. So try to complete it within while the class is going on, but sometimes the time won't allow us for me to allow you to uh, take the notes within the class itself. So later you can play the video and uh, complete your notes, okay? Keep the notes updated. In some again, a screenshot, sir, of attendance, sir. Again. Some of the students come late, no, sir. One minute or two minutes. After I start the class, within first five minutes, you have to join, okay? Because. Sorry, sir. It is the first day now. Right. To complete the full class, right? Okay, let me.